I just found my wife outside. I'm sitting here freaking out. Mm. It's 3.37 a.m. and I just found my wife outside. This is gonna be a mess as I'm still shaking, but look, let me explain it as best I can. A bunch of years ago, we lived in another house. One night, I woke up in the middle of the night because I heard noises coming from the other half of the house. I quietly opened the bedroom door and immediately saw a light on in my wife's study, which was situated next to the kitchen. The house we lived in was a few blocks away from the bad neighbourhood, so my immediate thought was that someone had broken in and was going through the stuff in my wife's room as my wife had come to bed with me several hours prior, and as far as I knew, she was still in bed. I crept through the house and was ready to confront the person in the room when I realised that it was my wife. In my still half asleep state, I just assumed she was still in bed. Turns out she'd woken up, couldn't get back to sleep and so went to her room to browse Facebook or whatever for a while. I'd almost confronted my own wife, thinking she was a burglar. In our current house, we have a screen door and a wooden door. The wooden door has a deadbolt on it and you have to make sure that you take the house keys with you because if you close the wooden door, you're not getting back in, unless you grab the hidden spare key or knock on the door or window to be let back in. So, it's about an hour ago, I'm woken up by the front door rattling. I immediately grab my phone and pull up the security camera located right by the front door. To my surprise, I see my wife standing there, kind of shivering. It's definitely her because we've been married over a decade and I know what my own wife looks like. She's dressed in the same clothing she wore today, a red top and black pants. It's 100% her. I don't know what she's doing outside, but she is. Confused, I roll over and there's my wife, fast asleep. Remembering the incident in our last place, I used my phone screen to shine a light on her and confirm that it's definitely her and she's definitely in bed. At this point, I'm really confused. I get up and make my way through the house to the front door. As I walk into the lounge room, our cat looks up at me half asleep. Normally, she's super curious about stuff going on outside and I would have thought hearing the screen door rattling would have caused her to be at the door trying to see what's going on, but it's as if she hasn't heard a thing. I stand by the door and call out, Who is it? It's me, hurry up and let me back in, I'm freezing. Mm, no, thanks. I went outside because I heard something but forgot to take the keys in my bag with me. That absolutely sounds like my wife. Accent, intonation, knowledge about where her set of keys are, everything. But I'm not convinced because I've just seen her sleeping in the bed with my own eyes. Hold on a second, I tell her. Now I'm heading back through the house and into my bedroom. I wake up my wife and say, this is really fucking weird, you have to see this. I open up the camera app and show her the front door. She's still at the door, looking around, wondering what I'm doing because all I need to do is let her back in, turn the handle on the deadbolt and open the door. My wife says, what the fuck? When was that recorded? I tell her, it's not, this is live. You're standing outside by the front door. I just went down there, asked who it was, and your voice told me it was you and that I should let you back in because you're freezing and you left your keys in your bag. My wife gets up and peers through the bedroom window as you can just see the front door alcove from there. She gasps and pulls the curtains shut. She turns around and I'll never forget the look on her face as long as I live. She's terrified. That's me, she says. At this point, I'm freaking the fuck out. I'm wide awake, I'm speaking to my wife and I'm physically touching her while trying to peer out the window with her, but there she is, standing outside in the very outfit she wore today. Same hair, same glasses, same everything. We walk into the lounge room and I grab the big torch I have. It's a big, sturdy, metal, super bright light, great for blinding people and hitting them if they get too close. Sounds like he's got previous experience. Mm. We stand by the door again. What's your name? I ask. She tells me her full name, including her middle name. It's correct. What's your birthday? She tells me it's also correct. What do we have for dinner tonight? She tells me this too and tells me that I cooked it. This is right too. I can hear my real wife standing next to me trying to control her breathing as she's scared out of her wits. I nudge her and whisper, ask her something only you would know. After a moment, to steady herself and think of something, she speaks. When we last stayed with my parents, what change had my dad made to my old room? There was a pause. Who's that? The person outside said. Why aren't you letting me in? You know it's me, you're, you're starting to freak me out here. Who's that inside with you? Is that a recording of me? What's going on here? I said, answer the question. What change had been made to your room when we last visited? Another pause, then finally. Uh, 
There was a second bed added, as Max and Damien, my brother-in-law's two kids, sleep in there whilst visiting mum and dad. There's an audible gasp from my wife next to me. Now we're both freaked out. I grab her hand and lead her back into the bedroom and turn the lights on. We're still awake, watching the cameras. The other person walked towards the backyard, presumably to grab the spare key, but that was about 40 minutes ago, and I haven't seen them since. I'm too shit scared to go to bed because I'm scared that this person, who knew everything about my wife, will find the spare key mm. and enter. I don't know who the fuck they really are or what they want, but I'm not sleeping. <laughs> If you're home alone or laying in bed, you probably want to skip this one. This story was submitted by one of my followers out of Mobile, Alabama. The story will be a little bit longer, but I want to tell her story because it will literally send chills down your spine. One night, laying in bed on her side, under the blankets with her back facing the door. She was very tired and just ready to go to sleep, and that's when she heard something behind her. Hey, hey. Hey, knowing she was home alone, this instantly sent chills down her whole body. And she said without completely turning her whole body over, she rolled over just enough to see the scariest thing that she'd ever seen in her entire life. As she rolled over, she said she seen this man or creature, demon, whatever it was, it was squatted down beside of her bed, and when she rolled over, she was eye level with it, staring face to face. The first thing she noticed was its glowing yellow eyes, and you have to keep in mind, she was eye to eye with this thing. She said her bed was actually very low, so this thing had squatted down, and now was just inches from her face. Along with those glowing yellow eyes, she said its teeth were very just jagged and nasty looking, and she could see them because it started just doing this maniacal laugh. Its nose was very long and pointy, and its skin was like something out of a horror film. It wasn't like human skin, it was just this something otherworldly looking, and its skin just had bumps on it, but it was also dressed in all black. She took a deep gasp, she tried to scream, but couldn't get nothing out. She was just frozen. So the only thing she knew to do was, she said she jumped up out of bed and grabbed her car keys and just flew out of the house. She drove to a local gas station and just parked there and stayed the rest of the night. She couldn't bring herself to go back home because she knew she was the only person in that house and this creature, this demon, it was certainly not a person. A couple weeks go by without any kind of incident and she's just getting brave enough really to go back to bed in her own bedroom. That is until she's laying there one night, just like she had been the night this all happened before, with her back facing the door, laying on her side. Then she heard it again. Hey, hey, hey. She knew immediately it was this creature once more and she didn't dare turn over. She knew better than to do that. This time, she said she just immediately leaped up out of bed and she was going to run out of the house like she did before. Except when she got up to go down the hall, she noticed this thing wasn't beside of her bed. It was standing at the end of her hallway. And she would have to run by this creature to get outside. This time, she could make out a little bit more detail. She said she seen the long, gray, stringy hair and it was wearing a hat. And Later on, she would do research about similar incidents people have had, which you could find, I have videos on the top hat man or the hat man. She said, but it wasn't like a top hat, it was more like a golfer's hat, is the way she described it. Since this thing was blocking her exit, she said the only thing she knew to do at that point was just pray. So she just prayed the remainder of the night. Thankfully, prayer works because this thing ended up just vanishing or leaving but she said that was the beginning of the end for her. She moved out of this house just a couple weeks later, but she had a theory of why this thing may have been there. She was going through a very rough time in her life. She was going through a bad marriage and was just at a really low point. And this is something that she and I discussed too. 
and I truly believe this, when people are at their lowest, their weakest, most vulnerable points in their life, that's when these demonic entities will try to attack you. This was the most terrifying experience of her life. She said that she could still remember every wrinkle on this thing's face and what it looked like. Thankfully, she did get out of that house and thus far has had no other encounters with this creature. But I want to know from you guys if you've ever experienced anything like this, the hat man, the top hat man, or maybe it's wearing like a golfer's hat or whatever, because I'm seeing a trend with this thing. I actually had an encounter with it when I was a kid, except it was a top hat. Let me know in the comments. You guys have a great day. God bless. Someone recently left a comment in one of my videos saying that they wanted a creepy camping story. So I found this story and I hope you like it. <laughs> this girl said that when she was around 12, she had a group of friends and they would always do sleepovers. They would all take turns. So like whenever it was another time for a sleepover, they would be a certain person's house and they would keep going down the list. So a new girl came to school and she joined her group of friends. However, she could never host sleepovers because her mom was like disabled and in the middle of the night she would scream and it was scary for them they did tell her that they can just skip over her and she can continue going to everybody else's sleepovers but samantha really wanted to host a sleepover so samantha thought what if i hosted our sleepover at my aunt's and uncle's house but instead of being indoors we can have like a camp out and we could stay outside obviously they all agreed because it sounded like so much fun so samantha's aunt and uncle live out in the middle of nowhere so they did have to ask for their parents permission and thankfully they agreed to let them go camp out so the day comes and all the girls are at samantha's house getting ready getting flashlights and tents and that's when samantha's older brother came into the house the girl that's telling the story didn't know that samantha even had an older brother but she could tell that all the other girls had a big crush on her older brother i guess because of that the older brother started talking to the girl that's telling us a story and he was asking them what they were doing so she starts telling him that they're gonna go camp out at his aunt's and uncle's house and she says that when she says that his face it looked like he was concerned he then asked her is there an adult that's gonna go with you guys and before she could even answer he just looked at his sister and said hey is dad gonna go with you guys when you go camping but samantha came and grabbed the girl's hand and pushed her away from him and said leave my friends alone without even answering him and he left the room so as they were going outside to get in the car to go she sees that her brother is out there too and when he sees them he gets closer to all the girls and says hey when you guys go spend the night at my aunts and uncles please be very careful and do not leave that house at nighttime and one of the girls is like what do you mean we're going out there to camp out we're going to stay the night outside that was the whole point of us going and then he said something to them very strange he told them you guys should not stay outside because out there on our aunts and uncles land is the devil and all the girls were like what the hell but the girls telling us this story was like the devil so you're telling me that the devil lives at your aunts and uncles land and they all started laughing and making fun of him she says that she didn't mean to say that and for them to start laughing at him but he was like okay well whatever just please take care of yourselves but i've warned you she says that on their way to the girls aunts and uncles house she wanted to ask the girls what they thought about his warning but before she could ask they all started talking about how cute he was and all the crushes they had on him but she mentions that when she gets to the aunts and uncles home she started feeling weird like even when she got there the wind was eerie like something felt negative there so at this point they had been inside the aunts and uncles home and they had the chimney going and the living room looked comfortable and all of the girls were like well what if we stay in here like it's so cold outside why are we gonna stay out there when we can stay in here by the chimney but samantha was like no we worked so hard to get the tents and the flashlights and the fire so we're gonna camp out outside and they couldn't convince her otherwise so she says that they go out there they set up the tents the fire and it wasn't that bad even though the wind was still going crazy they had a good time for the first few hours and around 9 p.m. the aunt comes out and gives them hot chocolate and then a little while later they end up going to bed so the following is what she remembers from that night she says that she was asleep and she got woken up very quietly by one of her friends she says that when she finally opens her eyes her friend is telling her that she needs to be quiet gets close to her and whispers in her ear you need to get up just in case we have to make a run for it she had no idea what the hell was going on but when she looked around the tent she can see one of the other friends crying hysterically but covering her mouth and samantha was 
at the zipper of the tent looking outside. She remembers Samantha telling her and the girls that they need to calm down and soon it was gonna leave. She said because she didn't understand what the hell was going on, she walked towards Samantha to look out of that tent and she says that her friends tried to stop her but they couldn't. She wanted to see what the hell they were looking at. She says that when she got close to Samantha who was looking out, Samantha started pointing to like a very dark corner near her aunt's and uncle's home but that when she looked, she didn't see anything and she tells her, there's nothing there, what are you looking at? And Samantha's like, look again. And she looks again and sees a very dark figure almost as tall as the house in that very darkened spot she said that it looked like it was almost trying to see inside the house and at one moment she actually saw horns like a deer when she saw that she was like oh it's an animal because she was trying to like be realistic like what if it's an animal you know it's not the devil however in that moment she saw where this thing was like almost smelling the air and when it was smelling the air it just turned its head to where they were in the tent in a split second this thing just jumped onto a tree and they could tell that it was jumping from tree to tree by the sounds of the ruffling of the leaves in that moment they all decided to run to the door and start banging it so that the aunt and uncle can come out she says that she was so scared she was looking behind her making sure nothing was coming out however it was weird how fast the aunt and uncle opened that door almost like they were waiting for them to come inside she explains that even their spare bedroom was ready for them to go in there and fall asleep she says that everything was so strange that she remembers it almost like if maybe it was a dream but the four girls couldn't have had the same dream at the same time she said that they managed to fall asleep in that bedroom and out of nowhere like an hour or two later they all woke up at the same same time and they all heard the same sounds like if something huge was jumping from tree to tree she said that after that they didn't hear anything again but even that was scary because either this thing is staying still for so that we don't hear it or what if it's peeking into the windows of the house like they had seen it do she said luckily their parents came for them very early in the morning and after a year Samantha actually moved away she says that sometimes she tries to justify it maybe being an animal but there was no way an animal was as tall as the house she doesn't know what to make of it and now regrets not taking that brother's warning of not staying outside of that house anyway what do you guys think uh, this story was from relatos de la noche i'm gonna add a screenshot here in the timestamp where you guys can listen to it in spanish there is a lot more information in spanish that i had to take out because this story is a little bit long <laughs> When I was 12 years old, I had a best friend named Brenda. <laughs> Didn't we all? After school, we always went to her house. She lived in a big house on the edge of town. One day, Brenda didn't show up for school. She was absent for the next few days, and I began wondering if there was something wrong with her. After she had missed a whole week of school, I decided to pay her a visit. I cycled all the way across town and arrived at her house just as it was getting dark outside. When I rang the doorbell, I got the shock when the door opened almost immediately. Brenda's mother was standing in the doorway, but there was something very strange about her. Her eyes seemed darker than usual and her hair was hanging loose around her shoulders. I noticed that she was wearing a bathrobe. The most unsettling thing was the way that she was grinning at me. She didn't say a word, she just stood there staring at me with an evil smile playing across her lips. Is Brenda here? I asked nervously. She beckoned at me to come in and before I could say anything, she'd slipped back into the darkened house. As I stepped inside, my eyes strained to see in the darkness, but I wasn't sure where she'd gone. But just then, I heard a strange humming sound. I followed it into the kitchen. I found her there, standing at the kitchen sink with her back towards me. The moment I entered the kitchen, she stopped humming and there was an eerie silence. I took a seat at the kitchen table and waited. She seemed to be taking forever. I spent the next five minutes just sitting there wondering what was going on and then I realised something very odd. The whole time I'd been sitting there, she hadn't moved a muscle. Her back was still towards me and I couldn't see her face. Her hands hung limply by her sides and her head was tilted slightly. Something was very wrong. I stood up nervously and approached her. She remained completely still. Ever so slowly, I moved around her and tried to get a look at her face to see if she was alright. The sight still haunts me to this very day. 
Her eyes were wide open and she still had that evil grin on her face. I was so freaked out that I couldn't bear to stay in the kitchen a moment longer. Without saying a word, I backed out of the room and made my way towards the front door. I jumped on my bike and began cycling as fast as I could down the long, winding driveway and all the way across town. I didn't stop until I reached the safety of my own house. It wasn't until a few days later that I found out why my friend Brenda had been absent from school. My parents told me that there'd been a tragic death in Brenda's family. Who died? I asked. My parents broke the sad news to me and it made my hair stand on end. I was crying from fright. Brenda's mother had died suddenly. The night I was called over to her house, Brenda had been at her grandparents' place attending the funeral. Years later, when I was 16, I made a little extra money by working as a babysitter on weekends. One evening, a friend of mine called me and said she knew a family who desperately needed a babysitter. She was busy and wanted to know if I was interested in babysitting for them instead. She told me the parents were really nice, the pay was good and their three-year-old daughter was polite and well-behaved. I wasn't doing anything important, so I told her I'd be really glad to take the job. That evening, I went to the family's house and met the mother. Her name was Ruth and she was getting ready to go out for the night with friends. She mentioned that her husband was out of town on business and gave me some numbers to call if I needed to get in touch with her. The night was really easy. I made dinner for the little girl, gave her a bubble bath and then I got a dress for bed. It was around midnight when I heard the front door open and footsteps coming down the hallway. I thought it was strange because I hadn't even heard a car pull up. Turning round, I was relieved to see Ruth making her way into the living room where I was sitting watching TV. She never said a word to me and as she walked past me, I was surprised by how different she looked. Something about her eyes had changed and she was grinning from ear to ear. I felt a cold chill run down my spine. I knew that evil grin. I'd seen it before, many, many years ago. Ruth sat at the dining table with her back turned towards me. Her hands hung limp by her sides and her head was cocked to the left. She was humming to herself. Ruth, I asked nervously. Ruth, are you okay? No answer. Ruth, you're not alive anymore, are you? Silence. With shaking hands, I quickly gathered my things and backed out of the room. When I got to the hallway, I opened the front door and I looked outside. There was no car in the driveway. All of a sudden, the eerie silence was broken by the sound of the phone ringing. I didn't want to answer it. I was afraid of what I might hear. For a moment, my hand seemed to hover over the phone. Then I lifted the receiver and put it to my ear. I already knew who it was. It was the police calling to tell me that Ruth had been involved in a car accident an hour ago. She'd been killed on impact. Tears were streaming down my face as I ran upstairs, grabbed Ruth's daughter from her bed and bundled her up in the blanket. As I came back downstairs, I had to pass by the door to the living room. I could still see Ruth sitting at the table with her back to me. Without pausing for a second, I ran out into the night carrying the little girl in my arms. Let me tell you why you shouldn't play with your shadow. Scary story time. So my godfather, he watches my TikToks a lot and obviously he loves my content and he's also Haitian and he called me the other day and he was like, I have so many stories for you to tell your followers of things that happened to me when I was in Haiti and this is one of them. So he said he was really young at the time, like he was a young boy and one night right before his bedtime, he was just playing around and for some reason he just started playing with his shadow, you know, just dancing with his shadow he was dancing and dancing and dancing and he was having a great time and finally when it was time for him to go to bed he went to bed and this is when it starts have y'all ever heard of the hat man the man in the hat that supposedly is in everybody's dream right when he was telling me this story y'all he didn't even know who the hat man was and i had to tell him i was like yo he was in your dream too anyways he goes to sleep and he wakes up in the middle of the night he said he was dreaming but it wasn't a dream like it it, like the way it felt it was not a dream he woke up but it was not a dream i don't know how to explain it i hope that like makes sense anyways he wakes up and there's the hat man the hat man walks into his room and just looks at him with this like creepy smile he is terrified y'all so then the hat man walks closer to him and guess what he tells him come dance with me come dance with me and as he's saying come dance with me he's backing up he's like come dance with me come dance with me he's backing up and as he backs up he gets to the door he stops and all of a sudden my godfather hears 
drums outside. Now, if you know, if you're Caribbean, you know it's not just like the regular drums, but like the tambu. And if you know tambu, you know tambu sounds like that was a terrible interpretation, but you get it, you get it. And it sounds like there is a party outside. And as soon as the drum starts going, the hat man starts dancing right there in front of him. And the dance, the dance that he was doing, my godfather said is so creepy. At this point, he's crying. Like he's a young boy. And at this point, he is in tears, y'all. And the hat man is just, it just keeps telling him, come dance with me. Come dance with me. Come dance with me. He's dancing and it's telling him, come dance with me. He's dancing. It's like, and it's like a whole lot of people outside. You hear the people outside dancing and partying, kind of like a ritual, right? my godfather is screaming crying so then his mom for some reason she knew what was going on i don't know how but she knew what was going on she came into that room took him and took him to her room now obviously she didn't see anything in the room it was only my godfather that saw everything that was happening oh but the story doesn't end there <laughs> so he goes to his mom's room and of course he feels a little bit safer you know because he's with his mom so he goes back to sleep then he starts dreaming again. But this time, the dream was a little different. Because he's with his mom, so he goes back to sleep. Then he starts dreaming again. But this time, the dream was a little different. He starts dreaming that he's somewhere in his neighborhood home, right? And then he sees this group of people in all white. Everybody's dressed in all white white and then when he says this to me he goes this is why till this day i think all white parties are really some kind of ritual bro and people don't even know but anyway so everybody is in all white and guess what same thing except the hat man is not there it's all different types of people and then there's this lady and it's this the same thing drums everybody's dancing everybody's dancing and he starts getting scared all over again because now he's having a nightmare and there's this lady that steps out and the lady comes and says come dance with us come on come dance with us come dance with us and he books it and the lady he vividly remembers the the face of this lady because obviously like it was terrifying for him in his dream so he books it he runs whatever he wakes up it's the next day it's fine but it doesn't end there the next day while he's home guess who comes in front of his house the lady that he saw from the dream the lady comes in front of his house where his mother was and starts cursing at his mother and start cursing at him and i mean she's cursing i mean she's going she is going and she's like cursing them out for no reason and she's saying like hurtful things things that would piss you off things that would make you want to punch somebody but his mom says nothing and him his mom looks at him and says do not respond do not say anything she tells my godfather to get in the house and he does but she stays outside and mind you the lady is only getting madder because she's not getting a response she's going in mind you she was causing a scene like people were starting to gather around to figure out like what is this lady's problem and finally once she realizes that his mom knows what she's doing and she's not responding she starts to pick up rocks and throwing it at the house throwing it at the house and all his mom did was look at her and say i know you're here for my son but you won't be getting him and just gets in the house and says nothing else to her and eventually she leaves now what happened was they wanted her son they wanted her son's soul she knew that but we don't know how she knew that but then again it's our elders like there's certain things that they just know and that we don't and my godfather almost says that like till this day he wishes he was he asked his mother like how did you know now I think the lesson in this story is that you don't always have to engage with everybody that tries to get on your nerves. When the enemy is trying you, you don't have to always engage because sometimes that's what they want. They want you to respond. You ever heard the saying, as soon as you get angry, you lose? Well, sometimes you lose just for even responding. She was looking for a response. Had his mom said oh bitch who you talking to that's it right there that's all she needed now her son is gone had her son said something 
that's all she needed now her son is gone not everybody that's trying you you need to respond to you understand what i mean you really need to learn in this world bro this this is an evil world especially with like witchcraft and stuff you need to you need to know bro you need to understand that that's you don't have to engage in everything sometimes you have to know to just walk away not because you're pussy not because of any other reason but for your own well-being your pride can get you killed he told me a couple of other stories too so with great lessons just like this one let me know if y'all want me to tell that story and I'll, I'll make a story time.